with that urgent rescue underway for an American explorer stuck thousands of feet below the surface. More than 100 rescuers right now trying to get Mark Dickey out of Turkey's third deepest cave after he fell ill. The Marka Cave is extremely deep, it's extremely narrow, and that's adding challenges to the rescue mission, which will take days. Officials say Dickey is experiencing gastrointestinal bleeding. He's unable to leave the cave on his own, but he is currently conscious and stable at a campsite. Mark Dickey from nearly a thousand meters. We're still waiting for communications to actually reach down here. So right now it's a, a day to two days worth of travel for information to get back and forth. So I don't quite know what's happened, but um, I do know that um, the quick response of the Turkish government to get the medical supplies that I needed, uh, in my opinion, saved my life. Um, I was very close to the edge when Jessica got back to me. Look forward to working with everyone to safely get myself out with their assistance. Um, as you can see, I'm up, I'm alert, I'm talking, uh, but I'm not healed on the inside yet, so I need a, a lot of help to get out of here. Well, joining me now is Dr. Corey Abair with the LSU School of Medicine. Dr. Abair, thank you for being with us. Uh, so we just heard from Mark Dickey there. How encouraged are you to see him up and speaking like that, especially when he says himself he was very close to the end? Sure. I mean, as an amateur spelunker, I just have to say he is lucky. When I say lucky, he is really lucky because it is such a treacherous thing to be a, a, a cave uh, a spelunker. Because basically what happens is that you have to go to deep, deep depths, but not only just going deep, it's dark. Also, you have to uh, be mindful of your oxygen. Time or nighttime, you just, uh, it's just, a, it's fraught with just all types of treachery. And, and the fact that he's still alive is, is a good thing. Uh, you know, and doctor, last hour we spoke with Gretchen Baker. She's with the National Cave Rescue Mission. She knows Mark Dickey personally. She says he's very healthy. She doesn't think his illness is directly related to being down so far. Uh, but you say you're an amateur spin lunker there. Being that deep in a cave certainly cannot help. What does it do to your internal organs when you go down that deep? Well, you know, it's kind of like going very, very high in an airplane or, or going into a place that doesn't have a lot of good oxygen uh, supply. So basically, you can have an increase of nitrogen, okay? And when you have an increase of nitrogen, that is called narcosis. And when you get that, your brain starts to, to act a little bit sketchy, and then you will pass out. So a lot of times, people uh, die from that. But you also can get the bends. So that's like that decompression sickness that you get when you go uh, 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 to scuba diving. And so that's the same type of thing. And so as you move forward, you got you could also drown because you fall into these underwater caves. You can also get a uh, cave fever with histoplasmosis, leptospirosis, you know, decreased oxygen, all these things. And the issue with him is that he had some bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding. We don't really know why he's having the bleeding, but they gave him five units of blood, which is a really good thing. So that can get his oxygen up so he can be able to move and, and, and to try to get out of there and get some strength. But when you lose blood, you already have no oxygen. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, a, a situation that if he didn't have the rapid response from the Turkish government, he would not even be here to talk at, at this point. Yeah, absolutely not. You know, there's so many challenges. You laid some of them out uh, when it comes to this rescue. You know, it takes hours just, just to make any type of move it, movement, sometimes days. Uh, we spoke with the person last hour about the rescue. Sometimes they have to widen portions of uh, the cave as they're, they're going down. How does that impact uh, an ill patient, you know, who was not in the ER, who was not getting that immediate care from a team of physicians like you would if you're saying, hey, I don't feel good, I just go to my local hospital. Yeah, well, one thing we know that if he could not move and he had to get five units of blood and he still can't move, he must have an active bleeding situation right now. And that means that he's got ongoing losses. He's nervous as hell. He's And, and so he's got his heart's beating fast. You know, he's anxious. He's not having a lot of uh, IV fluid. So he's kind of dehydrated. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. And if, and if you're trying to traverse, you know, five days, six days in that in that uh, uh, frame of, of, of health, you're going to have a, a, a big problem as you move up. Now, you know, just think of Indiana Jones. You know, like when he was running and that ball was behind him and he's going in and out of these caverns and caves. Think about that, but in real life. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so as, as this is happening, you kind of got to, I'm sure he feels a lot better now that he's surrounded by people that he knows is going to help, that he knows is going, they're going to help him. But the reality is that he still thinks that he could possibly perish because mm -hmm. he can't get to real medical care in, in six, seven days. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.